All right, welcome back to Kimchi Rednecks. Today is another tech debacle. What am I doing today? I'm stealing an idea from another channel. I think it was Linus Tech Tips, but I have an older laptop. It's about four or five years old. And you know how it is, your laptop after a couple of years seems to slow down, everything seems to take a little bit longer, nothing seems to be quite, quite as high speed as it used to be. And the thing I had been watching was basically that in a laptop, the thermal paste or the thermal compound can dry out a lot faster. So replacing the thermal compound in your laptop may actually bring some life back into it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let me show you what I'm gonna be working with real quick. All right, hold on, I got, I got to aim. Here we go. So this is what I'm working with. I've got my old MSI laptop. I think it's a G something, GE something, FX53. Oh yeah, it's an older one. So. It's actually a gaming laptop. It's a Intel i7-77 something, I think. It's, um, and it's got a NVIDIA 1050 on it. So it's not, a, it's not a bad laptop. So I've got some conductinot. I'm going liquid metal on it. I'm going to see if we can, we can get the goodness on here. Now I got my um, no-name brand fix-it kit here for taking stuff apart. I've got some rubbing alcohol for helping clean stuff up. I've got some painter's tape and a exacto knife for um, hopefully for keeping my conductor knot in the lines and some Q-tips for applications. So I'm gonna get set up here in a few minutes uh, and I'm gonna do most of this as a time lapse because yeah, it's not that hard. Take the plate off, take the, the heat sink off of everything, clean off all the goop. I'm gonna use a painter's tape to paint out little squares where the goop was do in the liquid metal, put it all back on and see if it works. Now I'm going to throw up on the screen here, a little graph that I did somewhere of, I ran my laptop through a couple of applications, you know, like one of them was the heaven benchmark. One of them was the Cinebench. I don't remember if it was R20 or R23, but basically to see what the performance was and also how much heat it generated and short version, pretty much every single application I ran, caused both the CPU and the GPU to thermal throttle. I'm not so sure about the GPU, but I know the CPU, if you ever use hardware info, you know how it stays black until it turns red, which is right before it's gonna, in red it thermal throttles, and when it hits the limit, it just like thermal shuts off. Literally every application I ran caused the CPU to thermal throttle, it went red. So I'm gonna see, hopefully, if replacing this, gets me some good numbers, or at least some, some non-thermal throttle numbers. Of course, those would be good numbers. So let's get to it. All right, so for our first stop in the tech debacle here, let me show you what we've gotten so far. All right, let me get that in focus here. We've got the bottom side of the back plate here. So unless I'm missing my guess, this is the pad for the CPU. And you can tell there's like almost no thermal goop in that square there or the one for the GPU. And right here on the board, they seem to be almost bare on top too. So it's looking like there was not enough thermal paste or the thermal paste has evacuated. Now on this one, there's these four little splotches here, which coincide to these four, I'm guessing either power regulators or capacitors there. Um, so I don't think I can put liquid metal on those. So I'll have to go grab uh, a tube of my regular cryonaut, but that and that are gonna get the conductor knot and those patches ought to leave me a good square to use for an outline. So back to the time lapse.
All right, so next little intermission here. Um, I have gotten the little areas for the CPU and the GPU taped off. Fortunately, there were little notch marks in the copper plate for the corners of the thing, so I put my tape lines just inside those, so that should hopefully cover that and have that ready to go. I have not put anything here because over here on the board itself, I've went out and found my tube of cryonaut and put a little dab on top of each one of those caps. So hopefully that's enough for that to make contact when it comes down. Any eagle-eyed tech aficionados above among you may have seen that I have not changed these thermal pads that go to, I'm guessing that's GPU memory, or actually that would make that the CPU and that the GPU. That actually would make more sense because the GPU tends to get a little hotter. Um, so it would get the bigger plate. But um, I have not changed those because I don't have any spares. So hopefully they're still good. So I am going to do the thermal, the uh, little liquid metal bit, and put this back together. So here we go. All right, so liquid metal applied, everything's put back together, and just to avoid the bad juju of sealing something up before you try it, I turned it on before I finished sealing the case to make sure that, you know, the power came on and it didn't immediately burst into flames. Um, so that's good. So I've got everything bolted together. I'm gonna take it on the other room, stick it on the charger, uh, run it for a little bit, let it heat up, make sure all the, all the thermal goop has a little time to settle, and then I'm gonna rerun my benchmarks and we will throw them up on the screen here so we can see what the difference in temperatures is between the two, if any. So it's liquid metal. I hope there's some difference. Anyway, we'll see y'all in a minute. All right, so update on how we happened. Um, I'm gonna throw up on the screen here somewhere a graph I did in Excel of the temperatures that I got. If you can read the graph, because Excel didn't do me any favors with the formatting, um, you will notice the difference between the CPU one and CPU two and GPU one and GPU two went down across the board. Now, the interesting thing is the actual scores on the benchmarks didn't really change much. So on some of the ones that generate numbers, I may have gone, you know, up 50 points or actually in some of them, strangely, I went down a little bit, but it's error of margin. It's just a little bit different. The times, didn't really change much. The Blender GPU render was within half a second. Actually, the Blender CPU render, strangely enough, although the temperature on the CPU is, if I'm looking at my graph right here, about seven degrees cooler. You would think the CPU would be able to boost more or hold the boost longer, but the actual time for the Blender um, CPU render was like five minutes slower or three and a half minutes slower or something like that. I didn't, I messed up my notes. I didn't write that one down, but I remember it being slightly longer. So I had a brain thought, I had a brain wave and let me grab my laptop. I realized that if I'm looking at the back of my laptop here, the fan is about right here, but the vents are down here. Now, in theory, I understand that means it's forcing it to pull air and then drag it across the components that are in here. But the fan would spin up really fast as well, which means that it was struggling to pull air through there so it wouldn't get enough air. So, if you can see in here, I grabbed my drill and a little drill bit, and I mean a little drill bit, it was a small one, um, and I drilled some speed holes. So, again, 
the fans over here, I kind of drilled these in, a, in about a half circle around the periphery of it so that they're not directly next to it, so they would air suck air straight through them, but it will still cause pulling air from here, a slight vacuum effect on the vents from here, which will pull air all the way across it. So I did a third round of testing. Ha ha ha! Q next graph. This one is even slightly harder to read, so it's got a CPU-3 and a GPU-3 on it. And if you'll notice on that one, the temperatures again drop several degrees C from each. So I'm looking at a monitor over here, so excuse me. But like on the Fire Strike 3D Mark, it went from, let's see, what's GPU-2? GPU-2 is yellow and GPU-3 is green. So it went from 65.7 to 57.3. That's a pretty decent drop. The CPU temp, uh, CPU 2 is gray and CPU 3 is blue. So that went from 81 to 76. That's a, what, a five degree drop? That's pretty good. And if you consider it from the original, you know, that original CPU temp on that one was 86. And this is 76. That's a full 10 degree drop. Original GPU was 79.5, GPU 3 is 57. That's them significant temperature drops. Now, again, the funny thing about this is the actual numbers that it scored in the benchmark didn't really change. Maybe up a little, maybe down a little, but overall the performance stayed about the same, but my temperatures have gone down, which is very important. Also, the sound of the air being blown through the film the heat fins has gone down. It's not whooshing air as much. Although the sound of it sucking air through the my speed holes here is a little louder than it was before. So that kind of washes out. But overall, even if it doesn't, uh, the performance stays roughly about the same. At least the temperatures are lower and, it, and it's not putting out as much heat and it doesn't feel like it's going to set it itself on fire. So I'm going to call that a minor win. So next time around, I've got another detect debacle plan soon. I'm going to be rebuilding the server that I never finished building in the first place. So check back for that one. Hopefully not too long from now. I got some, I got some stuff to do. So like subscribe, do the internet stuff. See you around.